you save the best and fast for last. At number one, a machine gun that separates the men from the boys, the Browning M2. The M2 shoots a 50 caliber cartridge at a rate of 450 to 575 rounds per minute. It has a maximum range of an astounding four and a half miles. During World War I, the machine gun proved its worth on the battlefield. In 1918, General Blackjack Pershing turned to famed gunmaker John Browning to create a more universal weapon. The idea here was not just to go ahead and create another machine gun to be used against personnel, but actually a weapon which could destroy things, trucks, aircraft, emplacements. In 1918, Browning started testing several 50 caliber prototypes. Finally, in 1933, the Browning machine gun, or M2, was introduced. U.S. troops nicknamed the new gun, Ma Deuce. design change that improved the weapon was making it air cool. It allowed that weapon to become much more adept. They could put it in the wing of an aircraft, they could put it on top of a tank, they could put it in a jeep, they could put it in all these other places that they couldn't before. With that kind of versatility, the M2 became the basic weapon for the United States in a number of areas of conflict. During World War II, Fighter planes typically carried six or eight of them. B-17 and B-24 bombers were equipped with a dozen or more. What the Americans did is they put a lot of 50 calibers in the airplane, and that would put out a very large wall of lead that any airplane ran into would just get torn apart. Outside Reno, Nevada, with gun manufacturer Curtis DeBoer. This is the standard M3 tripod. This is the traversing and elevating mechanism. So you can zero in on a target. You can move this up and down. And slide the gun from side to side and lock the gun in to give you uh, direct fire right onto a target, and, and it's quite accurate the size of the 50 caliber round that is so deadly. This is the 30-06 round that was used in uh, World War I and World War II. Uh, this is the 50 caliber round. Considerable size difference. The M2 is capable of using armor-piercing incendiary rounds, which destroy light-armored vehicles by igniting their fuel tanks. is bulky and the sheer size and weight are significant factors when employing the gun. It is a heavy gun and it has to be mounted either on a fixed hard vehicle or on a tripod. side of the gun, ideal in a situation where two guns are mounted side by side. The brass is ejected out of the bottom, so there's no interference with the other gun. It's this kind of versatility that ranks high with the armed forces. If you were to talk to a, a, a sergeant in any army or Marine Corps around the world and say, what piece of equipment would you covet more than any other? to help you and your men survive. I think they would look at you and they say, give me a 50 caliber machine gun. Its reliability and potent use of force make the M2 our number one machine gun. We're still building them today. And not just building a few, but it's still the heavy machine gun of the world. And there's nothing that can be higher than that. of automatic weapons. I don't think there's a finer machine gun. Rodus rocks.
open battlefield in a crowded urban combat zone or a thick jungle hotspot. The machine gun has played a unique role in the history of warfare. It has forced armies to change the way they fight. And it has revolutionized the infantry. It has been the ultimate game changer on battlefields around the world. Hi YouTube, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe and all that stuff. Peace.